Hello friends, I have such exciting news. So today I am doing something that I never thought would ever happen to me. Um, I started playing this particular game nearly three years ago when it first came out and it was my first article that I ever wrote on a site called Fuzzable. And ever since that I've been getting to know the cast and I've been interviewing quite a few members of the cast and Today I have the incredible honour of talking to somebody so special, somebody I actually consider a really dear friend of mine and I'm so excited for you to join this journey. It's been one hell of one for me. <laughs> um, but here goes nothing. This is my conversation with the one and only Roger Clark. So sit back, relax, enjoy and I hope you all have a wonderful day and enjoy it because I'm so so I'm so nervous but we're gonna have fun it's gonna be a great laugh so yeah hope y'all enjoy yeah. all right so I am joined today by the incredibly talented and lovely Roger Clark hello how's it going <laughs> how you get how have you been how's how's life treating you how's COVID life treating you Oh, God. Not that you've got COVID life. <laughs> yeah, but we all know what COVID life is, though, don't we? After I the know. past year and a half and everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's well. I'm, I'm, I think could be, things are good. Things are good. I, um, I've been, we've started rolling out in the cons again. I'm very sad to hear about uh, Edinburgh being cancelled, as we all know by now. But, uh, you know, it's not cancelled. It's just postponed. Cool. We'll, li we'll live to fight another day. And I can't wait to see you and... Uh, and all, all of them people from the northern UK and Scotland come in yeah. when we eventually do meet up, which I don't know. It'll probably be in about a year from now. Yeah. Yeah, it really is gotten like I, I remember like reading it like, oh, come on, why this close? And you're like, no, it's not happening. <laughs> it's just so evil. <laughs> yeah. From my understanding, they, they, had to, they had to secure half the venue or something for testing. And it just rendered oh. it un unprofitable for the for the venue holders. So they they're pushing it on, which is fair enough, I guess. You know, and it's good to have it when we can have it. We'll have a big, big, big old hoo-ha and it'll be great. Oh, of course. And you said Birmingham's possibly still on the cards. Possibly, maybe. I don't know. But I know MCM are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll wait and see. You know, you got my um, you got my social media. I always make those announcements there. Absolutely. Well, it's weird because um, I was saying to people the other day, it feels like I've known you for well, ever since the game came out, but I've known you for such a while now. But yeah, I was still nervous to chat to you, if that makes sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me, Kay. You know me. Oh, it's all grand. Yeah. How are you, Ben, anyway? Things have been normal. Like, um... I'm going to London tomorrow night. I'll be getting like the overnight bus over to London. Cool. Uh, and I'll be seeing Hamilton. I'm so oh, excited. Awesome. Where's that being? Is that on in the West End? Is the West End uh, opened yeah. up yet? Yeah, all of that's opened up. Um, I don't oh. know. I can't remember when it opened, but all very recently. I understand Hamilton on Broadway has opened up as well, which is insane. It's starting to, yeah, starting After to. like, what, 520 days or something like that? Yeah, Mad. yeah, it's crazy, crazy stuff. That's why, you know, all the all the theater actors and Broadway actors, they were the ones hit the hardest, you know, by COVID and whatnot. I was lucky enough to be able to still be locked yeah. up in my cave here during the worst of it, you know, and still spit out a few audio books and some secretive video games that I can't talk about yet, but there'll be, or we'll be finding out about in the next year or two. But there, the, so many of my colleagues that are amazingly talented and most of their bread and butter comes from Broadway, man. They were really struggling. And I'm, I'm so, so happy that it's slowly, slowly coming back to this new normal. I don't know if we'll ever go back to what it was, but it's a new normal. No, I mean, I know that um, Nicola Sturgeon, our Prime Minister, she doesn't want us to like let go of masks until I don't know when. She she said after Christmas, but I, I have a feeling it might even be longer. I don't know. Mm. But that some doesn't people bother it's me. Be a, some people it's going to be a lot longer, isn't it? You just, just everybody's yeah. got different levels of comfort. What really sucks right now is that, especially in healthcare, I think with 
they're always saying that vaccines are or volunt- like you don't have to get one it's kind of like it's up to yourself but now it's a case of if you don't get your vaccine you're not gonna have a job that's what it's like in my company anyway and it's it's such a shame wow. I, I understand why but at the same time it's, it's also not fair mm. <laughs> yeah well I, I don't believe in forcing anyone to do anything really but uh, you know if 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 you're working in the healthcare industry, yeah, I could see where not being vaccinated could be a massive problem. Mm. Yeah. So I was meaning to ask you, and this is like, I should really know this from how long I've known you, but um, with performance capture and things, was that your first time doing it for Rockstar or have you done it before? No, I, I did it before uh, in the UK, actually, out in Kent um, for a, uh, it was a studio called, oh gosh, they've, they've long dissolved now, EDOS, EDOS and Rebellion Games. We made a game called Shellshock 2. Uh, okay. I played, a, I played a many, many, many characters, but the main one was a supporting character by the name of Sergeant Griffin. And if you check him out on YouTube, he's kind of a, he's a, kind of a precursor to Arthur. He's kind of got the same kind of draw. Really? Yeah, but it, it was set in Vietnam and there was loads of zombies. So nice. Vietnam War with zombies. I was I was I was a lot of zombies, and I, I'll never forget the first time I went into the volume, as we call the stage when you're doing performance capture. I was fascinated by the technology and everything, and we worked on that maybe about a week, and uh, had a blast. And my eyes were just wide opened. Uh, I couldn't believe this new medium. Basically, it's a brand new way to perform and. You know, the video game industry really has taken it and ran with it. Uh, And now we're seeing the film industry using it just as much now with Lord of the Rings, Planet of the Apes, Avengers. Marvel are using it more and more now, too. And we've got uh, the Avatar sequel coming up. So, you know, I'm just I love performance capture and, you know, having worked with it. I've been doing it now 15 years. Obviously, the majority of my experience was with Red Dead. But uh, it's just a, it's just a ways of performance that just fascinates me. And also being able to see the way the technology has unfolded over the years, too, and how much it's advanced is, uh, has been really exciting to witness, especially as an actor, because you get to see all the freedoms that, that, that we're now afforded as performers. You know, when I was doing that Shellshock 2 game, I'll never forget. It would take, like, let's say, for example, you wanted to introduce a, a prop into the volume that they wanted the actors to be able to interact with, and then they would be able to be uh, then render that into the computer animations. It would take like, sometimes it would take 20 minutes for all the sensors to plot and read it. And then when I first started working for Rockstar, I remember saying, oh, we need to, oh, we need a different, a different gun. Oh gosh, is, how long is that going to take? And they're like, no, it's just like that. I was like, whoa, are you serious? I remember that taking 20 minutes a couple of years ago. He said, ah, you're working with Rockstar now, pal. So it was just really fascinating to see the technology advance. And it's still advancing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's awesome. Did you know any, well, obviously, I I know that you're a gamer or not. I don't know how hard of a gamer you are, but um, did you know much about Rockstar when you first came into the the role? Yes. Yeah, I've been a huge fan of Rockstar games uh, for 20 years. I took a, a hiatus from gaming when I graduated college for about 10 years, but I played the first Grand Theft Auto. I played, uh, I, ne- I never got a blast on GTA 2, which is, I think, one of probably one of the rarest GTAs. Mm-hmm. But the first Grand Theft Auto, massive fan. Gra- GTA 3 blew my mind as it did the whole world. You know, that changed gaming everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I was in college during that. And- that was one of my favorite games that I was a big, huge fan of that and Resident Evil and Final Fantasy and then Vice City, San Andreas. I, I kind of missed four, although I, I returned to it when I came back to gaming. But yeah, I've been a huge fan of Rockstar Games pretty much since their inception. I think they started in 97, I think was when they were founded. And I, I've been a big fan of them probably since 2000, 1999. I was about to say, if I told you the year I was born, you'd probably think I was a total baby. <laughs> you are a total baby. <laughs> um, I was to ask or maybe as well. I'm just old. Maybe I'm just old. That's a better Never. way of putting it. Never, Roger. <laughs> I was going to say, um, 
wasn't Molly pregnant with your youngest when you were doing Red Dead or was she, did you just have him or? When we started working, uh, my oldest, Colin, was born. Oh, of and, course. And Rory was, uh, Rory was on the way about a couple, not too long into the job, maybe about a year into the job uh, was, was when Rory started his journey into the planet. Yeah. And so much happened in those five years that I worked on that game. A lot of things, a lot of things happened, not just for me, you know, but for everyone. Five so years, a long did, time. Yeah. How did you um, kind of work between the work balance and then at home? How did you kind of cope with both of them at once? Because after you had two babies running around and then you're like, I just came home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I basically didn't sleep. Um, wow. I, I um. <laughs> It was, it started off, it was a pretty much a full-time job. Uh, our typical schedule, it wasn't so much as, it wasn't very uh, intense at the beginning. You know, we kind of found our footing and, and they were, they were uh, finishing off GTA 5 at the same time too. So their priority when I started was finishing GTA 5. That was in like August of 2018. But once we got in, uh, 2013, sorry, 2013. But once we kind of got into 2014, that's when uh, we really started to get intense with uh, with the work. And so typically what we would do would, was we would work three weeks straight doing performance capture. And those would typically be between 12, 14 hour days, uh, uh, driving out to Long Island. I lived in Manhattan at the time. And uh, then two weeks off, and then we'd do it again, three weeks on, two weeks off. But during those two weeks off, you know, more often than not, we would uh, we would maybe do a little bit of voice acting in the booth. We'll do a couple of sessions in those two weeks yeah. of just uh, of just lines. Uh, but even then, we would have a face cam so that they could sync the lips. But to answer your question, Kay, I yeah, you know, I usually get home about nine p.m. Uh, and the the boys were small then, you know, and my wife, God bless her, she'd be with them most of the day, and uh, <sighs> she'd need a break, you know. So I, I probably slept three or four hours a night for three or four years. Oh, my God. I'm just catching up now. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. So um, do the boys, like, understand what you've done or, like, who Arthur is? Or do you kind of kind of steer them away from it a wee bit because they're still quite young? They know who Arthur is. They know who what Red Dead Redemption is. Um, they can't play it yet. No, really, I um, sometimes I let them watch, you know, like if I'm going riding around or fishing, but I haven't played it in a while, to be fair. But when I was playing it, I would let them watch some of the more wildlife aspects of it, you know, mm. but then every once in a while, I know Driscoll would pop out from behind a tree and I'd pause it and say, OK, guys, you got to leave the room now. And I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, uh, to be honest, I, I figure by the time they're old enough to be able to play it, they probably won't want to. They're already kind of losing interest. It's all Roblox and Minecraft now at the moment. And my youngest is, he's become a, a bit of a demon on Geometry Dash. Have you heard of this one? It's it a phone. It's, it's pretty cool. He's designing his own levels and stuff. He's pretty amazing at it. Yeah. Cool. Um, so a friend of mine asked, um, when, I know you talk a lot about mental health and things like that. But if you're to face like, uh, I don't know what the word is, I guess if you're self-doubting yourself, not only in your job, but in yourself, how would you kind of cope with that? And how would you give that advice to somebody else? Well, I, um, as an actor, you experience that a lot, you know, uh, even I still do now, you know, I still don't get jobs, you know, I still... I still can't even get auditions for some jobs. And, uh, you know, sometimes you, you, you think to yourself, you know, especially when you work in a fickle industry like this, where talent and hard work isn't necessarily any guarantee at all whatsoever. You know, I, sometimes I just have to remind myself that this is, uh, this is life. And sometimes your perceptions of it can fool you. Yeah. And uh, you have to uh, you have to stop and breathe every once in a while and just remind yourself that, well, sometimes your perceptions aren't actually the truth. You know, sometimes sometimes we we often think the worst of ourselves. We often are, are our own worst.
worst enemy. And uh, if and when we really feel that way, you know, we often have to, I think we need to give ourselves time to breathe and, uh, and just remind yourself that feelings are just that. You know, I've said it before, you know, not to disregard your feelings because feelings are important, but let's not give them more gravity than what they're owed either because feelings are not necessarily true. They're feelings and feelings come and feelings go. And sometimes they're justified. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes we create them in our own head. And sometimes they're the justified reaction of what happens to us. And uh, if we give ourselves and afford ourselves a bit of time, often we can find out the difference between them. So it's always good to just breathe and to uh, just maybe second guess yourself. It's the only time we maybe should second guess yourself and says, OK, why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. Am I justified in feeling this way? Or is this just because of what, ha is there some other reason? Is this because of what happened this morning? Is this related? And uh, stop being so hard on ourselves, you know? Yeah. Like, um, you, you know well that I've, I've struggled a lot with my own mental health and then there's a lot of other people out there that have. If somebody was to walk up to you at a con or um, just like on the street or anything and say like your performances are for Morgan is helped me through this or the game has done this for me how does that make you feel well that has happened a few times and it makes me feel absolutely wonderful you know i i'm completely blessed uh, to have been able to be part of something that's appreciated it's enjoyed by so many people i mean as a performer nobody can ask for more than that you know I, i've been a professional for over 20 years now and for over the first half of that career, I was not able to make a living from acting alone. And, uh, and shortly before I started working for Rockstar, that changed. And I was the most grateful man on the planet then. And now, now that people come up to me and tell me that the work of my colleagues and I helped them through dark times. And that is something that I did not anticipate. When people tell me, you know, that reminds me of my father or my grandfather, who we, and, you know, we didn't get along that well, but one of the few things that we did connect and bond over was our love of Westerns. And, mm -hmm. and when they found out that there's a video game that's just like John Wayne movies, you know, it, it kind of brought us back together and lots of stories about that, which makes me very, very grateful to have been able to be a part of enriching so many people's lives in whatever small capacity it was because let's not forget you know it's video game isn't like a film or a tv show you know the actor's contribution to a video game is honestly a, it's a smaller piece of the pie than it is on a movie you know there's so many animators engineers sound designers designers producers directors um the list goes on and on uh stunt stunt coordinators stunt performers it uh, literally took a small village to make red dead and that was over half a decade my involvement was five years some others were, were longer than that like closer to around seven so it's just a real joy to be able to entertain that's all any real any performer really wants and to be able to do it on a mass level like that is a real privilege so this is kind of jumping into spoiler territory or anyone who's clicked on the video has most likely played the game so is it a spoiler I don't know but um, did you have any how, how far into the filming did you know about our first date did you find out it was pretty early on we did the the downs mission oh, of course yeah pretty early on actually it was like the second or third session to be honest really and, uh, yeah and I, it was very specific on the page it was like Downs coughs right into Arthur's face. I was like, I hadn't seen that before. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> you're really trying that. Oh, gosh, you're really making a point of that, aren't you? And I was like, uh, <laughs> what's that all about? Uh, and our director, Rod Edge, I remember him saying to me, uh, Ben, this is back in like autumn of 2013. He said, oh, yeah, your, your character gets TB. And I was like, oh, okay, right. And of course, I knew, I already knew John Marston's fate, having played the first one. First game. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, is this kind of like going to be what, like what happened the first time? So then I was like, uh, I was Googling when they found a cure for TB on my phone. 
I was like, okay, so they found a cure then. All right. What what year does this game take place again? 1899, Raj. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I knew. So I knew for, for pretty early on. Um, and uh, to be honest, you know, I I thought I found I found it was I thought it was very interesting because spoiler alert, obviously, but when you play the first Red Dead Redemption, John's demise is quite sudden, it's unexpected, mm -hmm. you don't see it coming. Uh, and then they were keeping that somewhat keeping that same format, although this time Arthur's fate is is uh is no, a very slow no arrival and we know it's coming, and it's it's a very gradual, gradual decline that we all have to witness. And by the point that he becomes sick, you know, we the player have probably been spending about 30 hours with Arthur, yeah. all told, you know, so. In many ways, we 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 identify with him. We we feel like we are him because we're responsible for his actions and whatnot. So that's why I that's why it made me interested because I thought, oh, that'll be really cool, mm -hmm. or it could be really horrible because people would still be upset that they're not John Marston. You know, <laughs> I was uh, about to say it was a bit like, well, I know what happened in the last Red Dead. I'm sure you're not going to be afraid to get rid of another protagonist in the game. <laughs> Yeah, well, as, as much as the guy who did Jack Marston did such a great job, I, I still missed jo John when, when I was doing the first mm -hmm. one. But, you know, knowing what Arthur's fate was, but not knowing exactly how it was going to happen until probably about four years into the project is when we started doing Arthur's death scenes, of which there are four. Of course, uh, yeah. Four years knowing that this character that I had been living with and inhabiting on a day-to-day -day basis, knowing that he was going to meet his demise, but not knowing, exactly knowing how. That was, that was something. And I remember doing the first death scene, which is the one that I think is, I, pref I, th I think I, is the one that's canon, which is high honor going to high help honor. John mm -hmm. you know, up on the mountain uh, where Micah doesn't shoot you in the face, that one. Or doesn't stab you. <laughs> yeah. That was the first one we did. Um, and uh, we got the sides, the script, maybe ab about, about a week in advance. So uh, plenty of time to work on it, rehearse it, etc. cetera. Uh, but I was nervous. I was really nervous saying goodbye to this character that I had been working on longer than any other character in my life. You know, I had toured theater for years, but you know, it was the same, it was the same scenes every night, but with Arthur, it was, something different every month to month to month, you know, and as the story fleshed out and progressed, you know, I, I got to understand and, and detail him more and more, you know? Yeah. So I, why do I, I always end up going like blank for like a brief <laughs> second. Um, so everyone that I've interviewed before seems to have this weird onset ritual that they did. Did you have anything like that? An onset ritual. Yeah, like anything you'd have to do before you were called on. No, no, I really? didn't. I mean, no, we would have to do a ROM, which just stands for range of motion, which was so how, how the sensors would uh, would lock you in, basically lock your balls into the system so that it wouldn't confuse you for, with another actor. If you were standing side by side, for right. example, okay. it wouldn't confuse the balls, you know. So that kind of, in a way, became my ritual as it was necessary, you know. Uh, and at the beginning, at the beginning, I would often, I would, I would, uh, I would work with Arthur's voice, you know, just to make sure that it was consistent. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, it didn't take long to just be able to slip into him because I had been working with him for so long. Uh, that uh, any ritual that I did have, it was probably just within the ROM, you know. Something I found this out uh, because you mentioned it on Twitter, but something about the movement in a scene from Red Dead, and it was like the epilogue version where John was in. So, does that did, when you and um, Rob did these scenes for the epilogue, was it just your performance capture, or was it a bit of Rob's as well? So Rob did all the epilogue. I didn't do any of that because he's John. And no, no, no um, I meant like, say if you did like the mission of Hamish before Arthur died. Oh, the side and missions. Then, yeah. yeah. Me and Rob shared the side missions. It was oh, probably okay. it's probably about a 60-40 split, you know, depending on what he was doing or what I was doing on the day. Um, he I would do the performance capture 
for one side mission. Uh, and then sometimes years would go by and then he would provide the, the dialogue for it in the booth to my mocap and vice versa. If the mission could have been done by either Arthur or John, you know, one of us would do the performance capture and then the other one would, uh, would put their dialogue over the other actor's mocap. So it's very subtly, some, I can tell the difference between me and Rob. Rob leads with yeah. his chest a lot more than me. I swing my arms more. Um, <laughs> and then there's little bits too, like for example, those little subtle things where if it's a series of side missions with one player and you start it with Arthur and finish it with John, that's when Rockstar Games, you know, they really showed their attention to detail then because they would write dialogue where it was usually Rob would go, oh, yeah, I heard you helped out my friend Arthur. And, uh, well, uh, yeah. fortunately, he passed on. So Rob had to do a lot of those as well. I didn't do those. But, um, yeah, it was a fascinating way to do it. And it was funny, too, because it was one of the few moments in the game where every once in a while a side mission would come up and I'd be like, I don't remember doing this. Oh yeah, this was Rob. Okay, cool. And it would be kind of fresh. It would be refreshing for me because I would like, oh, I remember doing the lines for this in a booth, but I, oh, this is really, it would be nice because I didn't know what exactly what would be happening next. That happened with me when I came up to the epilogue too. I was like, I don't actually know what's going to happen next, you know? <laughs> yeah. So we're, did you know anything about the epilogue? Was that completely like unknown to you or did you know bits and pieces? I knew bits and pieces, you know, things would just slip out in the green room and whatnot. But for the most part, I was like, oh, guys, I don't want to know. I don't want to know because I was looking forward to the surprise. Oh, don't, tell, nice. don't tell me what happens in the epilogue. <laughs> I like that. So I didn't. And for American Venom, like the final, final mission, I didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, no, that I would want to know about that. I, I mean, I guessed that Micah was finally going to get what was coming to him, but mm. I didn't know how or if indeed he really was. I just but yeah, I was that was I went into that reasonably blind, which was exciting. Well, something that I've been thinking about the other day, because I was just telling like stories about when I've been to cons and seeing you there, the amount of times you shout Lenny in one day, how bad is your throat after it? I'm used to it now. Really? <laughs> but it's a lot, it's a lot of times. Because <laughs> it's so funny, because at the start, you could just be at the beginning of the day, you're like, let in, and the end, you're like, let in. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've definitely, I've definitely pulled back, I think, from the start, especially, you know, what I've noticed now is if I go to a convention and the altitude's high, I'm totally not used to it. Oh, and, my God. Uh, my sinuses get all dry, and I, I, you know, I can feel my throat going a lot sooner if the altitude's high up. So, you know, usually I, I don't be screaming it for the whole benefit of the entire arena anymore. I'm just usually doing it for the person in front of me. So I saved my vocal cords a bit. <laughs> yeah. But I've been screaming my whole life, Kay. So, you know. Um. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Um, so I'm just looking over what I've written down. I've written so much random stuff. <laughs> who's, so the, was... who's the guy behind you directly above your head? Is that Joel on the guitar, is it? That's Ellie on the guitar. That's Ellie. Got, ah, yeah, okay. I've got and does Nate she have all her there. fingers? Does she have all her fingers or is that? She has all her fingers oh, in this Very one. good. Oh, Do you know okay. what? I have my Undead Gaming Controller right here because I was actually using it. I normally have it on the display. Ah, I haven't used my PS5. I'm not going to use my PS5 Red Dead. One. Really? After but is, all is that, it... you're not going to use it? <laughs> no, it's going to. I'm, I'm keeping it. My boys already kind of scratched my ps4 one so i'm not touching it i have it up on the wall and i've got normal ps5 the ps5 controller is awesome isn't it it's it's weird though when i first like held it it felt so heavy <laughs> but then it's like when you use it um i was playing ghost of tsushima the other day and it was like you throw your kanai thing and it's like a grappling hook but it's like the triggers for holding. And I was like pushing, but I'm definitely pushing these. Why isn't anything moving? And it's like, oh, it's the way the triggers are working. This is so good. Yeah. Uh, when I first started playing, I haven't been on the PS5 for a while now. I've been busy, but uh, playing Astro's Playroom was like really, oh, really so cool. Bad. Yeah. I and to just... all of you who haven't got one yet, we're sorry. We're not rubbing it in. I'm sure you'll get one soon. You know, and scal the scalpers, these scalpers are, <gasps> they're the worst the guys just get, are insane. yes yeah i hope i hope you guys bite off more than you can chew and you have to start selling them at a loss because it's what you guys deserve 
<laughs> I remember um, I was quite lucky because when it was first announced, like my game shop is like just literally a little bus ride away from me. Did you so pre-order? I managed, I pre-ordered it yeah, in yeah, the was, store I I and I managed to get it. Um, yeah. So, but I didn't realize how big it was. So, like when I got it from the shop, they were like, um, "Don't hold it by the bag; hold it by the box." And here's me walking through the town center, like this is a massive console in my arms. I was like, "Yeah, oh, this is gonna be worth it when I get home." Oh my gosh, I, I bet you had a few jealous eyes on you when you were walking home with that thing. <laughs> I know. I walk. People are just like, "Okay, then, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> I remember I told one of my colleagues at work that um I got my PS5 and he was like every time I try and order one it's sold out and like everyone was asking me how did you get one I was like I just pre-ordered it and they're like but how yeah <laughs> the ones who pre-ordered it were the only ones who got them yeah now, I didn't get mine until April of this year yeah yeah pre-ordering I usually don't pre-order things you know and very rarely anyway and, um and I wish I had done it for this and in the end, I wasn't able to get a disc one. I, I was, I just got a digital. Digital. Touch. I would have preferred the disc, but uh, yeah, I only like the di- the disc just so I can play my PS4 games as well. Exactly, exactly. And who knows, you know, what if, what if your memory gets corrupted? You know, so you've got that disc in your hand. You know, Sony mm-hmm. can't take that away from you. Yeah. yeah. So, another thing that I was thinking of the other day. Now, I was I was thinking this over, and I can't remember if Kylie said this was scripted or not, but the scene between Arthur and um, Miss Grimshaw, when she slapped you in the face, was that was that like a natural reaction, or was that... No, that, that was scripted. Uh, that was scripted. I think, apart from the scene with Lenny, I think this is the scene I talk about the most. <laughs> Everybody likes Arthur getting slapped across the face. Well, and Kylie, Kylie certainly keeps it alive too. But she's, that's kind of all she talks about. But anyway, yeah, we we worked on that for <laughs> about a, an hour or so because it was a kind of a weird dynamic. And yeah, no, she slapped me for real. Yeah, she slapped me for real. But it was scripted. Yeah, totally mm. was scripted. <laughs> I could only imagine that. Were you like killing yourselves laughing, or were you just completely like straight face professional? Well, you know, it, it took a while. It took a while to get it right. So, you know, we probably laughed the first one or two times, but after that, my face was starting to hurt. You know? Oh, because uh, you slapped. I'm, gl- <laughs> I'm glad my pain is of such amusement to you all. But yeah, it started <laughs> to hurt after a while. <laughs> but we, we got it in the end <laughs> and you know oh, it, it's 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 a good dynamic too because it shows it shows it shows Grimshaw and her and her status in the camp you know and mm-hmm. and we you know when we were working on it we didn't I didn't realize that there would be penalties if you didn't wash yourself you know eventually yeah. people will start commenting on your smell and apparently your uh your stamina uh will start to become compromised if you don't wash up because you're mm-hmm. you know they wanted to Make you know, encourage the player to, 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 to be immersive and to you know do what you would have to do, like the time it takes to brew a cup of coffee and to brush your horse and to feed your horse and to wash yourself. They wanted the uh, the player to really feel immersed in the world. So yeah, Grimshaw scolding you for not washing up uh, is 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 a great touch. And it usually for me, and I think for most people, it happens after you come back. After the fight with Tommy, when you're in the mud. Mm-hmm. And that's when, you when come... you're at the dirtiest, though. <laughs> yeah. And that's usually when Grimshaw will tell you. The thing that I don't get, though, is that after you do it, you then pay her. Why? Why? Yeah. Why does she get money after she gets she slaps Arthur across the face? He washes himself in a, a barrel of water and then she gets paid. I don't I don't get that at all. I think that's I think that's a bit of a, a little writing faux pas, if you ask me. I mean, maybe maybe <laughs> Arthur's a psychophant. Maybe he really liked it. Maybe he likes getting slapped around by her, huh? It's what he's been missing in his life. I mean, he's yeah. not been to Mary in a while. He needs someone to slap him about. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Grimshaw. I rather enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, you must like older women, so you know <laughs> could be a fetish of old Arthur's. Um, so if Arthur never contracted TB, what do you think he'd be up to right now? Well, not right now, because he'd be dead, but. 
I don't know. I've often thought about it and I, I, you know, I've come to the conclusion that, you know, without the tragedy, I don't think Red Dead 2 would have the impact yeah, that it has. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the total tragedy and the Greek definition in that, you know, the hero, the protagonist of the story, they are directly responsible for their own downfall. They, it's their direct action, which, which, uh, which causes their demise. You know, Arthur has the chance several times to, uh, to leave the gang and to go and pursue a better life. He has the choice not to do these horrible missions for Strauss, you know, who was lending money to the people who couldn't afford to pay it back. And, you know, and Arthur does have to atone for a lot of bad things that he does in the game. You know, no matter how you play it, whether you play him with, with the most honor you possibly can, Arthur's still guilty of a lot of bad deeds. And, mm-hmm. you know, morally, you know, there has to be, as far as the as narrative structure is concerned, there has to be an atonement for that. But I feel uh, like like if you play the game like on low honor, you won't have that same like punch as you would on high. Like if you're just if you die on low honor, you're like, right, okay, then it is called redemption, isn't it? Redemption is in the title. I think that's what you know. I think Rockstar Games definitely encourages you to play him uh, honorably. But the beauty is, is that you don't have to if you don't want to. (laughs) One thing about Rockstar Games is they always try and give the player as much freedom as humanly possible and that's one of the reasons i think they're an awesome studio too and you're right i don't think the story packs as much of a punch if you play them dishonorably but you can play them dishonorably which gives you ownership of the story also you know you if you if you play like a bastard you gotta you gotta pay more bounties there's more bounty hunters after you Every st- stuff in the stores cost more money. They definitely encourage you to play it one way, but you can do it whatever way you want. And that's that's where some of the real beauty lies, I think. I think as well, like when you're playing a game like Grand Theft Auto, because there's none of that, you could be a psychopath and not give a shit. <laughs> the amount of times I've just like sat and just ran over pedestrians on the street and just be like, ah, what a great game. And then when I play Red Dead, I would not dream of it. Not yeah. at all. Even if I was low honor, I would never dream of it. It's funny. Yeah, I, I agree. With, with GTA Five, though, I, I, I would feel more inclined to be psychopathic if I was Trevor. Yeah. But if I oh, was yeah, Michael, totally. I might not. I might not just run over random pedestrians if I was Michael or Franklin. But if I was Trevor, I'd be like, yeah, Trevor would do that. You know. <laughs> I think. I think it's really weird because um, some of the like. I always play the game, and I'm on my ninth playthrough now. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, tell me, are you still finding new things? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Wow. Literally, wow. I went into the camp, and I was still in Clemens Point by this by this thing. I think Sean's about to, you know, get a sore head. Uh, and um, I walked into the camp. And it was Bill wanting to rob a stagecoach, and you're doing it with Tilly as well. And I was like, "Yeah, no, I've I remember. not seen this." I have, yeah. That that I think that mission is only available for a very short amount of time. Yeah, I remember yeah. doing that, and it's hilarious too because Tilly gives. <laughs> he's like, Tilly, Tilly shows Bill what's what, you know? Yeah, yeah, Mary. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And then there was one straight after because I was just wanting to get on with some of the story missions. And then it was Sean robbing a stagecoach of Mary Beth. And I was like, oh, where, yeah. where yeah. have all these come from? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sometimes if you just blaze through the story missions, um, they get the they they're there and then they're gone again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But if you're taking your time, uh, yeah. I did I did get the Mary Beth Sean one on my on one of my playthroughs, but I haven't been able to do the Bill Tilly one yet. I remember doing it, of course, but I haven't played it. Yeah. It must be really rare because when I posted it, I was half expecting people to go, oh, you've not watched that yet. How many times have you played it? <laughs> but I was like, genuinely, I've not played it. And other yeah. people are like, where was it? At what point did you see this mission? And I was like, right in the middle of Clement's point. Mm, mm. It must be. It's a very short, short moment of time where I think it's available. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I haven't seen it much either. You're right. I remember as well, um, even some of your actions, like there's the mission where you're looking for Trelawney and um, and you see the guys in the camp, obviously you beat them up for information or you could just shoot one of the guys before mm. you even go into the cutscene. 
Mm, mm. And it was so funny to hear Charles go, that isn't part of her code. And I'm like, I'm just wanting to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But yeah, it triggers this cut scene that I've never seen before. And Arthur's a badass shooting at their feet. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Rockstar, think of everything. Rockstar went to the trouble of recording dialogue. It, like, this is how much they they anticipate the player, you know, or, or what the player might try to do to break the, you know, to find a bug or what have you. But if you hogtie a random NPC, not every NPC, but a lot of them, uh, they record a dialogue for a specific situation. And I'll tell you what it is. If you, high if you hogtie a, a random NPC, then pick them up and put them on the, on, the bottom, on the back end of a horse on the ground. And then if you wait long enough for that horse to start defecating, a lot of NPCs actually have recorded dialogue saying, oh, no, get it off me. Ah, oh, he's, po he's shitting all over me. Ah, oh, stop it. Stop it. So Rockstar Games went to the trouble of all these random NPCs, you know, all the actors who did. And that would have tipped most of the majority of that would have been voice acting in the booth. They went to the trouble of getting that dialogue just in case the player wanted to put them on the back end of a horse and have them shit all over them as they're hogtied. They got that dialogue down. That is dedication if you ask me that's incredible um i was thinking about this the other day was troy in this was troy in the game troy yeah because no. no. it's so bizarre because i was playing it the other day and it was the the vet with one leg in um in roads and somebody put up that it was his voice and i was like it sounds really really like joel but it's not and uh -huh. i was sitting there for a whole like five minutes like was it I'm sure he would have said if he was in this game because he loves Rockstar. A lot of but. people think Stephen Ogg is in the game too, but I'm not. I don't think he is. Ned Luke is, but I don't think his voice is featured. He was. He was very briefly in the game, wasn't he? Like a, a blink and you'll miss it type thing. Ogg or Ned? Um, no. Um... Yeah, Ned. Ned uh, was in for a couple of days, and I. And in the end, I think they took his voice out because they were scared that people would recognize Michael. Although the voice Ned was doing didn't sound anything like Michael to me. You know, Ned, Ned grew up in Illinois and, you know, he, he had some really great kind of Illinois kind of, he was, he had a great <laughs> voice. And I was like, I would, but in the end they went with a different uh, voice, but to my knowledge, he is, he, his mocap is when you're fighting Tommy, he's one of the spectators. And, and then, that, uh, and then another thing is when you, when you become deputized at Rhodes and you're doing that mission raiding the the moonshine distillery, mm -hmm. he's one of the moonshiners. Oh, nice! He, at least he he provided the mocap for it. They 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 got another someone else to do his voice. That, to my knowledge, those are that, those were two of the things that he did. He may have done more, but those are the two things that I remember him doing. You're gonna get some real internet internet sleuths now, just looking it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was meaning that I was meaning to say as well. Um, when obviously the idea of Michael being a rat was like the big, like oh my god, moment of the game. Did you, uh, was that kind of kept back, or did you know? Uh, well, it was pretty obvious that Micah was an I antagonist was. of some form or other, so it didn't come as that much of a surprise. Um, no, it didn't come as that much of a surprise. Yeah. I was kind of the same. Like every time I look back on it now, I'm kind of like, are we shocked? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people were like, yeah, we knew he was an asshole, but we didn't know he was that much of an asshole. Yeah. But I, we, you know, we, we kind of knew, you know, he was driving a wedge between the gang. And, you know, when it, when it got to the, when it come, came to the reveal, when Milton tells you uh, when you're trying to rescue Abigail, it didn't come mm -hmm. as that much of a surprise to me personally. No. Yeah. I wonder what Molly told them, though. Like, to this day, I still wonder. Or did she tell them anything? Was she just kind of drunk one day and said that she was? I don't know. I got a feeling she probably didn't tell them a, that one damn thing. And that, you know, she was her just her heart was broken. And that's why she just wanted to hurt Dutch. I think I think yeah. she was I think she didn't tell them a thing. Yeah, because yeah. I thought about that because I remember when I did um when I started acting college and I was like I don't know I want to do a Red Dead one-off I don't know who to do it for and you're like Molly like there's no other character that would be better for it because her art was insane 
Yeah. Yeah, and that's a, such a, and that's the beginning of chapter six, and it really sets the tone for chapter oh, six. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then by that point, when we see what happens to Molly, I'm glad, I'm grateful that all Grimshaw did was slap me for being dirty. Yeah, definitely. Um, so have you got any more cons coming up? Yes, yes, we're um, myself and Rob Weedoff. It's been great that, it, you know, we worked together for so long. And himself and Benjamin Byron Davis and Stephen Palmer, you know, they really welcomed me with open arms. It could have gone easily gone the other way, you know, when they were coming back uh, <laughs> to do Red Dead 2. <laughs> They're like, who the hell is this new guy? <laughs> they weren't like that at all. And Rob was, and having been, been such a huge fan of John Marston and then working with Rob, it was an amazing experience for me. And, uh, Obviously, we became dear friends, but now that I'm still able to hang out with him and uh, go f awesome. go f to these conventions and to meet up and see the impact of our work on, with the fans and to meet the wonderful, wonderful fans, it makes me so grateful and so blessed. But to answer your question, we're going to be at Wizard World in Chicago, uh, middle of next month. And uh, and then I'm doing something in Atlanta end of end of October. I think it's called Anime Atlanta. Although I don't care. Red Dead is an anime, but no, <laughs> we're gonna have a we're gonna have a barrel of laughs anyway. And then uh, you know, there's a few other things that hasn't been announced yet. I don't want to say it before the promoters do. You know. Mm. Um, I I completely took my hat off to the promoters because um, I don't know how much I can really share about that, but um, as you might know, Rob gave me a friends and family pass for. Um, for Edinburgh and when he told me that I was like can you do that is that a possibility of course yeah well, you, could, uh -huh. you could have asked me <laughs> but I'm glad you got one they'll transfer yeah. that over to next year right I hope so I mean yeah, like I've yeah. already got the tickets if they don't let me so. know all right oh thank you well and I even messaged them after and I was like oh yeah I got this out and I'm like yeah I know we organized it for you I was like, oh you did <laughs> yeah yeah of course yeah, I mean, it just shows how great you guys are. Like, it's weird because I look, everyone's kind of like shocked that how well I'm, like, for example, I know you guys. And I'm like, well, I've never considered them, um, I don't mean this in a bad way, but like, I've never considered you as like above me. You're just not. like humble actors that love what they do and they love the people that they interact with. They're nobody mm -hmm. different from us. So I love, I've talked to you, I've to always work. talked to you. Yeah, mm. if you're kind enough to take time out of your schedule and tell us how much you appreciated the work. And I know when we met in Dublin and you had all those gifts for me and that you, you know, the work, the trouble that you went to, to to get that scrapbook going together. And I know there's a few others in the works now as well. You know, it's, it's, it's the least we could do is to just to show our gratitude for your gratitude. And it means the world to us, like I said before, to to be lucky enough to be part of something that has this much of an audience is something most actors do not get to enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that we do is something that is never, ever lost on me. And uh, I, I really enjoy interacting with the fans uh, almost as much as I love working, you know? So what was your, I know you've been to many cons, this could be a really hard question to ask, answer, but um, what was your favorite con memory or one of? Or oh many? boy. <laughs> I remember in uh, Dublin, there was like, uh, there was a baby, they, some, some woman brought oh, her cosplay. She cosplayed up her baby as Arthur. That was brilliant. Oh, that was so so I had a few pictures taken with him. <laughs> and he luckily, he, he took to me. He didn't, he didn't bawl crying as soon as I picked him up. So. That was oh. that was definitely a high point. And it was a good cosplay, too. She did a really good job. Yeah. He looked almost spot on. Like, I almost, no, I didn't actually almost think it was Arthur. But no, she did a really great job with him. And I remember at that con, too, I mean, I had a, it was the first time I had been to home to Ireland in a very, mm -hmm. very long time. Uh, and I remember Lou Ferrigno, who you, you, some of you may know, who was the, the first Hulk. Uh, Hulk, live yeah. action Hulk in the television series back in the 70s and 80s and he's looking at my line and he's looking at me and after a while he just turns to me and he says who who are you <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh my name is Roger 
hello, Mr. Frigno. He's like, what did you what what did you do? <laughs> it's a video game, sir. You probably haven't heard of it. Oh, OK, fine. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. But there's is been it, so many, so many great moments. Uh, is it know. weird, though, like you get people like Troy and Nolan kind of go up to you like they're fans of you and you're kind of like, what? <laughs> Are you a bit uh, like that sometimes? Not anymore. But at first it was, yeah, because I was huge fans of them, uh, and I studied them and 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 liberally stole from them as I was working on Arthur. Oh, they don't know this. I was huge fan. Last of Us, Uncharted. I was playing all of those games whilst we were working on Red Dead, and uh, I to- they were total influences. And then to finally meet them. And not only to have met them, but to have become friends with them is uh, is something kind of something out of fairy tales, really. And uh, now it's just talking shop with them and and learning from them. And it's been a real amazing, amazing joy. You know, me me and Troy talk about our kids, you know. Oh, I know. Did you see the video Troy put on Instagram yesterday of Traveler playing? No, no. Oh I my haven't. god! I think he put like this Matrix style thing over him, and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, "This is so cute." <laughs> <laughs> oh, so cute. <laughs> um, I was meaning to ask you as well. Um, if you were to sit with Arthur, if Arthur was a real person, what would you say to him? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let me. Th- I mean, people. People think, people think I am Arthur. Uh, you know, some people do, and uh, I'm not by any may, means. Uh, no way am I Arthur at all. Um, I think Arthur, well, I, I'm not sure Arthur would listen to me if I had anything to say to him. You know, uh, <laughs> he is, uh, he's a no-nonsense guy who, you know, he does, who's pretty untrustworthy of strangers and, uh, I don't think he I don't think he likes to waste time talking to people that he has no agenda with, you know, mm. uh, but I would definitely recommend that he wear a mask more often, you know, especially on certain debt collecting missions. Maybe that would have changed things. Yeah, but he could get it in his eyes. Yeah, he could get or it in his, his eyes, ears yeah. or wherever it can go into his body, I guess. Yeah. I, I keep seeing these things on YouTube and it's people like, oh, there's a way that you can't get it. And I'm like, no, there's not. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you could go in this angle. You could go in this way. And I'm like, no. No, there is no way. No, there's the no way. It doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, that's it. Your story's cut pretty sharp. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's going to be not as interesting. <laughs> he lives happily. Oh, Mary will go run away with me. Okay, then. And then that's, that's it. That's it. Right? End of game. <laughs> Um, so what would you say to your younger self? Would he even believe that this has happened to you? My younger self? Oh. Uh, I would tell him to stop being so precious, maybe. Uh, maybe I would remind him not to take himself so seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would tell him that everything, it's going to be okay to not give up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would also remind him that it's the work that matters. It's not, it's not the benefits of it, but it's the work that, that's the thing. It's the doing. That's, that's where you find the joy. The joy is in the doing. And uh, everything else is just gravy. But, uh, but the best moment of, of an actor's day, or career for that matter, is when you're on your feet working, you know, uh, you know, applause is always a great thing, but you can't depend on it. It's not always going to be there. Um, and uh, and that's not what your reward should be. Your reward, your fulfillment is would be in the uh, in the exploration of the of the work at hand and and finding something with with your team and with your with your with your colleagues. The, the joy is in the doing, without a doubt. I feel like you've already answered the question that I'm about to ask, but um, what advice would you give to young to actors out there who are either just starting out or they're midway to getting a role? Or uh, uh, I'd, I'd tack on the last 
bit of what I just said and, yeah. and enjoy the doing. But I would also say, you know, uh, develop a thick skin and uh, don't take anything personally, especially when it is personal. Uh, you know, this is a very fickle industry and, uh, and hard work and talent is no guarantee of success. Uh, it, you know, there's a saying I've heard a lot, you know, amateur amateur dramatists do it because they love it whereas you know professional actors do it because they have to and uh, you know if you have a plan b uh more often than not you are gonna do plan b, plan b. <laughs> because there is it's such a competitive industry and there is there really is no guarantee whatsoever of any not just success but uh, just just work to be able to to look after yourself financially um you have to be in this for the right reasons and and you're you have to be fulfilled for the right reasons and if you're not you won't last you can't last um you know and where i would suggest you you search for fulfillment is the same way any artist is fulfilled and that is in the is in the creation itself and uh and once something is done, move on, move on. And don't, don't focus too much. Don't pat yourself on the back too much. Mm. Move on, move, go on, do next. And I know I do conventions all the time, but I'm right that, you know, that's kind of not taking my own advice, but I am working on other things as well. <laughs> you know, just to be able to, but to be able to, you know, the sound of applause should not be sought, but at the same time, when we get it, it should not be ignored either, you know? Mm. So what would you say to your fans and your followers right now? Thank you. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's well, about it, really. I mean, thank you. Thank you. It means well, a lot. Thank, thank you. And thank you for joining me. You, My pleasure. When you agreed to do it, I was just like, oh, this is this feels good. I mean, like, I know we've spoken to each other a lot, and I feel like it's it's a nice little thing to do, and nice to talk to you in a way that's not just like two buddies chatting like it's just this you're doing a great job Kay this thing's cool man this channel is pretty cool oh thank you yeah. um hang on now that oh I don't want to end it what am I doing I still there we go and yeah. we're back we're back <laughs> thank well... you for listening to our sponsors <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine um, well, Roger, thank you so much for joining me and I wish you all luck with your further careers and your upcoming cons. That's really exciting stuff. My pleasure, Kay. Yeah. Follow my social media for more announcements. And uh, there's, a, there's a few things in the pipeline, too. It ain't nothing until it's something, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe... All uh, of Roger's um, social media links and stuff will be down in my bio. And they'll also the link to his cameo is also in my bio, too. Yeah. Yeah, I've said happy birthday to a few people now. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> you said one too many Arthur quotes and some. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if you saw, but there's like um, one of Arthur's things have gone viral. You know, like the 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 alarm clock that somebody asked for. Yeah, yeah. That's gone viral on YouTube, and I was like, this very is good. The best so happy. Seen. Get up. Get up, you lazy, good for nothing. Yeah, why not? We all need a little ro roasting from Arthur in the morning, don't we? That's so perfect. <laughs> well, thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful day and give my best to Molly and the kids. Thank you, Kay. Take care. All right. All the best. Bye. Bye bye.